Hi, my name is Claire and I really like to knit. In my videos, I like to take you along the journey of knitting a jumper with me. And this week I have made my Knitting Queen jumper. If you want to see how I made this jumper all the way from inspiration, drafting, ripping bag, and everything that came with it, make sure you keep watching. Now, I'm not someone who's really into big designer brands, but I've had this jumper on my inspiration board for a few, maybe a couple of years now. When I first saw it, I'm like, oh, that's a cute top, and I can probably knit something like that, easy. So it's been on my inspiration board for a few years, and I've never done anything about it, so why not knit something now? Of course, I've already started. There it is. I'm knitting it from the bottom up. So this is the hem and I'm now doing the body. The yarn I'm using is the Fiber Co Road to China. It is a really beautiful and soft yarn. I actually unraveled this one from my old Birkin. In one of my wardrobe, wardrobe videos, I showed you my old Birkin and how much I hated the color combination I used. And I never ever wore it. So I unraveled it because the yarn, this yarn was actually pretty expensive. And now I'm using it to make this jumper. Um, it's a little bit kinky still. But I think after I finish knitting with it, I'll just give it a wash and it should be okay. And I'm using a black contrast yarn, which is the Rowan Soft Yak DK. It's a little bit thicker than the sport weight yarn, but I think the, it'll make the black pop out more. So that'll be fine. And the pattern, I am going to make it up as I go. And I've just come up with a few new little tools that I use to create this pattern. So why don't I show you now? So firstly, I've been doing quite a few self-drafted patterns lately and I find myself having to do calculations each time and I'm not very good at drawing so I've been trying to draw it on my iPad and it doesn't look very good and it's just a little bit rough. So I thought I would draw some templates of typical knitting shapes and write down the measurements that I like. Um, you know, just a little bit of four centimeters of positive ease, the length that I like, and I'll just pre-measure everything, put it into a template so that in the future when I want to do self-drafted patterns or do, um, you know, modifications, it'll make it easier. So found my son's old graph notebook. I drew up front and back piece of a setting sleeve top, um, did some measurements. Then I also did one that's for setting sleeve and a drop shoulder. So just basically drawn it out, putting my favorite measurements, and I scan this into my OneNote so that next time I do it, I can just use these measurements and convert them to stitch counts. This is what I have used to create my pattern. So firstly, I always use OneNote to um, kind of hold all of my patterns and inspirations. I've got my title, this jump is called, going to be called Knitting Queen. Um, I always use this table. I don't have any recommended stuff here. So it'll be the yarn I'm using is Fiber Co Row to China and row one soft yak DK in black. Needle I'm using 3.5. I've done little swatch. Mm, yeah, not a big swatch, but I got 22. And yeah, I'm not really good at doing swatches. I don't have the patience. I wanted to start straight away. So the swatch was tiny, but I think 22 would be close enough. This is the inspiration here. Uh, the top, I was thinking I'd just do a normal set in sleeve shape. And with the sleeve, um, I have a knit couture pattern where it is, it, where it has this really nice gather sleeve. It was really easy. It's just a very wide, flat kind of top seam. And you do knit two together all the way right on the last line to give it that gather. So I'm going to find the pattern and do it there. But I haven't done the calculations for the sleeves yet, but I have done it for the body. So this is a template that I scanned into the system. I know I like my width to be 44 centimeters. The length is generally 27, but it depends. I'm going to try it on as I go. This one, I may like it to be a little bit cropped. I know my armhole, oh, this is not supposed to be 18. I'll have to fix that. I know my armhole needs to be 18 plus two centimeters for the shoulder seam. So this should be 16. Anyway, I'll fix that later. Um, so the red is going to be my stitch count. So at 22 gauge, it'll be 96 stitches across. I did a five centimeter rib and um, it's going to be 96 st stitches all the way across here. From shoulder to shoulder, it's going to be 33 centimeters. So 33, let me put it in view here. 
times 2.2 will be 72 stitches. This is going to be 72 stitch. Um, and then we've got 96 take away 72 is 24. So I need to decrease 12, decrease 12 stitches on each side. Probably do a cast of four and then I'll cast off two. Then I'll cast off, that's six, right? Two, that's eight. And then I'll do one stitch every two times three. So this is how Japanese patterns write all of their instructions. What it means is I'm going to cast off two stitches every two rows one time. And then I'm going to cast off four stitches every two, uh, two stitches every two rows two times. And then I will cast off one stitch every two rows three times. And the total will be 12 stitches because you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And that will give me my armhole shaping. And then I'll do some sloping here as well. I'll do the calculations later. This is just to show you how I'm doing it. And then instead of doing Christian D all across the front, I'm going to put knitting queen. Yeah, because I'm, I'm a knitting queen. And it'll be in Tarsia and I'll do it from just below the armhole because it looks like they just started just below the armhole, didn't it? Oh, well, I'm currently knitting the round. So I probably need to separate for armholes around here. Okay, let me draw. I probably have to separate for armholes around here. Yeah, I'll think about that later. Uh, what I think I'll do is add a stitch here to join the seam and then I'll start doing my intarsia. And the intarsia I have drawn out in my trusty Excel spreadsheet. I know it's 95 stitches across and this is um, my knitting queen. However, now that I think about it, it's going to be 72 stitches across, not 92. Oh dear. All right, let me come back to this. Okay, my friends, no fear, I have worked it out. So here we're starting with 96 centimeters, right? And we're going to finish on 72, sorry, 96 stitches and we're going to finish on 72 stitches. So I have now recalibrated my intarsia. I'm moving it down a little bit. So the armhole will start here and I'm going to decrease four stitches, two, two, and then one stitch every four rows. And that gives me room to put the words in very nicely because if I decreased here too quickly, then it's gonna cut into these words and that won't look nice. So now we still have the words, I mean, I shrunk the words a little bit. Instead of six stitches across, they are now five stitches across. Yeah, that's right. So that looks still very nice and even. Um, and I have two here and two here, which is similar to this. The lines are slightly longer than the words. And these are my decreases. And I think that looks pretty darn good. I'm happy now. So I'll just um, check how many there are and get ready to Continue. Last night, I already got up to the first row of intarsia. Oh, sorry, not intarsia, color work. This is the bottom underline, and then I was going to do the lettering. However, I was looking a little bit short. I had um, planned for this to be 27 centimeter, which is my preferred cropped length, but it yeah, it was looking a little bit short, so I thought I'll pull out this one. This is called the Ever. Well, it's loosely based on a pattern called Ever by Kim Hargraves. It was in a Rowan book with um, Kim Hargraves design, and I really, really liked it. So it was loosely based on that because one, I really don't like reading Rowan patterns, and two, I just modified it to a fit that's more suitable for me. Um, and it was knit in the round. <laughs> instead of knitting in pieces. So what I had done with this one was um, adjust it for gauge, knit it in round. I think only really this pattern in the general shape kind of looks like the original pattern. The cables are the same. And then what I did was, a bit appealing, um, knit the sleeve up to the armhole and I joined it together and then just knit it all up as one piece from the bottom up, bottom up. 
and um, the decreases here and here at the same time. And this I took from a Kit Couture pattern. Um, and you can see the gathering here. Again, that's from the Kit Couture pattern, heavily modified to suit what I wanted. And I really, really like this top. I wear it all the time. So I thought whatever I knit with this one, it needs to look like this. And of course, this one is way longer than what I've got here. So I think I'll just have to unpick these five rows and re -knit it. If only I had written down what modifications I did, because I didn't, I just made it up as I go. So I'm going to have to figure it out while I'm knitting this one as well. Yep, but otherwise it's progressing along very nicely. The yarn, as expected, is lovely. I really like the feel of this Fiberco yarn. It's really soft and smooth. The first time I used this yarn, I didn't wear it. It was the Birkin. And that was because the color didn't suit me. So if you just had the beige against my skin tone, it makes me look dead. So I find that when I put a bit of contrast coloring with beige, like black or white or something crazy, it really helps to make it a little bit more suitable for my skin tone. I personally like, and I think it suits me, um, strong colors. So usually I would wear red, blue, black, and white, a bit of pink, and quite often neons and pastels. I don't wear a lot of earth colors because they wash me out. So with the beige and the black, it's going to work really well. I just realized the previous part, the top of my head was cut off, but you don't mind, do you? And also if you see something weird on my forehead, that's because I just went to the gym, had two classes of Pilates, so there's a bit of matte imprint still on my forehead. If you're interested, I'm going to show you how I'm going to change up the mats to suit my modifications again. So for this white top, the armhole to hem length is 32 centimeters. That means I'm going to change that to 32. And Yesterday, I also measured my row gauge. I know that it's 60, 36 rows to um, 10 centimeters. So I need to leave 20, I need to leave eight rows here, which is this bit here. I need to leave eight rows here before separating for the sleeves, uh, which is 2.5 centimeters. So 32, 32 take away 2.5. I'm now going to have to knit 29.5 centimeters here before I start the intarsia. I have also changed my armhole decreases from yesterday when I recorded it and I had the wrong armhole decreases. I've updated it so now this all fits nicely. I have also added in some more calculations here on the top so you can see from neckline to neckline opening it's going to be 40 stitches or 18 centimeters. Um, I will measure this one as well to figure out what this height is going to be and when I'm going to start casting off for the front of neck. This part's going to be going to be 16 stitches and here as you know I have already done the calculation is 12 and I might as well do um, the calculations here. How many rows is a general shoulder cast off? Four times? It's just four, 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 four. So each two rows, I'm going to cast off four stitches. That means it's going to be eight rows in total. From here to here, two centimeters, eight rows. Yeah, that's about right. Because here, 2.5 is eight rows. That's 2.5. That's about right. Good enough. I also want to show you, again, only if you're interested, how I um, reproportioned my Excel grid sheet. So it shows me exactly how Knitting Queen will look once knitted up because my row gauge and my width gauge is completely different. So my width gauge is 22 stitches per 10 centimeters, 22, and my row gauge was 36 rows. So obviously each stitch is not a square. So I had to reproportion these grids. Future Claire here. I was watching back while editing and I realized it the explanation was a bit of a mess, so just trust me that I reproportioned the grids so they look exactly like how it would look once it's knitted up. For the time being, I will now unravel the five rows here and knit up another five centimeters and start restart the color work. I've been mucking around for the last two hours and not being very productive. I've been doom scrolling online, looking at Facebook, Instagram. Bought a whole bunch of stuff that I don't really need from Howard Storage because they have 20% off. But now I have, I'm back, lunch is finished, 
I've cleaned up the lunch and I have finally unraveled that little bit I, I was talking about and back onto the stocking stitch march. Yeah, I'm going to call it the stocking stitch march. And not feeling very motivated about it because it's just stocking stitch in the round. I'm also dreading having to make 66 pieces of meat for my mom tonight because um, it's her birthday today and there is a Chinese tradition that says or your daughter or your daughter-in-law has to cook you 66 pieces of meat. We don't know where that tradition came from, what the meaning is, why you have to do it, but it's tradition, we just do it. And then mom's ex mom is expecting 66 pieces of meat. I bought some pork belly and I'm going to chop it up real small because there's no way she can eat it at all otherwise. And I really, really am not and don't enjoy cooking. Housekeeping is the bane of my existence. It is my kryptonite. I don't like cooking, I don't like cleaning, it's just... But now I've decided I'm not going to watch YouTube or doom scroll. I'm going to try read while I am knitting this somehow. Since it's stocking stitch, it shouldn't be too hard. I'm reading Big Swiss by Jen Vegan. It's really weird so far. Good weird. So I will try and read this and knit at the same time. You know what? I think I've had enough of knitting in the round. I'm at 29 centimeters. I'm supposed to do 29 and a half, but I am going to do it. I'm going to split and start doing the black because I really can't wait to see how the words turn out. I really want to start the color work straight away. And half centimeter, I can live with it. I'm going to grab my black and I'm going to start doing the knitting quick. If you've seen my videos before, you know that I tend to get a little bit excited, rush, 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 make a big mistake, and then having to rip back out again. Hi. So here it is. Here's my knitting queen. It looks so good. I think it worked out, don't you think? Mm. Can you tell it looks like it says knitting queen? Okay, but I have two major issues. Firstly, I said I was going to knit the two sleeves at the same time and I completely forgot about that. I'm already up to here and I forgot about the sleeves. I should have joined it at the arm separation. And secondly, as much as I love this, the tension is not amazing. See, this looks great, but the K, see the K just doesn't look as good as the other letters. And I put it down to tension issues. But there's a really, really big gap here because I tried twisting the yarn um, thinking it's intarsia but it's not intarsia it's color work so I don't need to twist the yarn because when I do it leaves this horrible ugly gap there also because of the tension the K this line here is very broken so it doesn't look amazing now the option is one option is just keep knitting and then just do sewn on sleeves after and I can always duplicate stitch the case here to make it look a little bit nicer. Second option, rip it back. Rip it back and go back to my original plan. What do I do? I guess it's not too much ripping back. It's only about a dozen rows, um, but it's a bit annoying. Also, I'm going to have to really block this one out. Can you tell this ball? Uh, this ball must be a new ball that I hadn't used before, whereas this part was ripped back from the Birkin. It just looks Awful compared to this part. So this is so nice and flat and this just looks wrinkly. So yeah, I'll be giving this a good soak once it's done and a nice block. But in the meantime, I guess we're ripping back again.
Yesterday, I have finished one sleeve, and I have finished two sleeves. They are very cute. I took the measurements out of my ever sweater. So I measured my ribbon gauge from the bottom of the jumper I just made, um, and then worked out what my cast on will be for the sleeves. Then I increased eight stitches right here to make it into a slightly wider sleeve to give me that puffy look. And then I will gather it here later, which will be like a little princess look, similar to that deal top. And then I ripped back my lettering. So I ripped it all the way back to the armhole separation, ready to put the sleeves on the same needle and start knitting the round. Because that's what I did with the Ever sweater and with my original design, which is the Kit Couture <laughs> Elmo sweater. So what you do is you know knit the sleeve up to the armhole separation, put it onto the same needle as the top and start knitting the round while decreasing here at the same time. It's very clever and very easy to knit. However, just as I was about to start, I realized a big mistake. The color work is only in the front. That means I can't knit in the round. How will the stranding work? This must be knit back and forth. Once again, my bad planning, rushing into knitting has foiled my plans. So we are now back to plan C whichever plan we were on, we'll be knitting the front separately, back and forth. We'll be knitting the back separately, back and forth. I'll finish each of the sleeves and then we'll be sewing them on. It's fine, because sewing on sleeves look nicer anyway. I just get very frustrated with myself for, once again, not doing a proper plan. It's all going to work out for the best later. And this is a slow craft, so it's okay to go back and redo parts of it. And to be honest, it hasn't even been a week yet, and I'm already, you know, more than halfway, more than halfway done. So I, I really should be happy with it. And I think it's going to look great. Since I'm already ripping back, I'm going to rip back two more rows because I'm not happy with the tension on row two. So I've only got three rows of color work anyway. Might as well rip it all back and start again so I can do it properly. I think the lettering here will be the most important part of the jumper. So that's got to look good. so proud of myself last night admiring this beautiful neckline I did so math so much math with it as well and I thought it was looking pretty good right I was almost up to the shoulder sloping and then I was looking at the original inspiration picture from Christian Dior and I suddenly realized there is not enough room to embroider the star what is this why does this keep happening to me Hi, Ollie. Uh. There's something, yeah, my brain is still in vacation mode because I'm just not thinking about it properly. And I did so much maths around this as well to make the neckline look nice. I did row calculations, gauge calculations, it was all correct, except for not leaving enough room for the star. And that was because for the Ever sweater, it had a slightly lower neckline, and I really liked that, so I thought I'd make it the same. But no, the neckline needs to be a little bit higher so I can embroider the star. So back to unpicking and back to doing more calculations. Okay, all of that hard work was worth it, wasn't it? Look. The shoulders and the front are all done. I did sloping with short rows, so the top is nice and straight for sewing. And same, I did um, a different bind-off method for the neckline, so there's no laddering. 
and the knitting queen that's me it looks so good i'm glad i took the time to unpack and do it again so now i'm going to do the back piece so pick up for the back piece finish that haven't done the back neck calculation yet but i think i'll just keep it simple and just do a two row decrease in the back then i have to finish the two sleeves sew them on do the star then i'm all set Ta-da! Last night I finished joining the shoulders, finished the front and back, and now I'm working on the sleeves. But this looks so good, right? Knitting queen, and I think it's showing the words really nicely. I have to close up here, that's why it looks big, but I have to close that up, put the sleeves on, do the neckline and do the star, and then it'll be all ready to go. Really happy. Ah! It's school holiday, so the boys are gonna be in a lot more of these ah! shots. Yes, Ollie, thank you. I am now working on the sleeves. Um, I'm doing them one at a time. It, I did them on circular until the armhole, and now I'm going back and forth. I think I'm almost done now. Then I'll do a two by two increase. No, knit two together on every single stitch, which will have it to about here. Hmm, I think that's okay. Uh, let me think about it. But yes, first sleeve almost done. Second sleeve is here. And then we are 90% there, maybe 85, 85% there. Just finished the star, but it looks terrible, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm gonna try again tomorrow in the daylight because, yeah, if my mom sees this, she will be shaking her head saying, noop, 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 do it again. Ta da! Last night I finished knitting. I had actually washed the pieces separately, and 24 hours later, it still wasn't fully dry. I don't know why, because the weather's both beautiful. I, I couldn't wait anymore, so I started sewing up the sleeves while it was still a little bit damp, but that was okay, because I think it's already finished shaping. Uh, I sewed up the sleeve, which looks pretty good, I think. See, just don't look at the armholes. The armhole's not great, but the rest of it, I think that looks really good, and mum might even approve. For the sleeve cap, sleeve cap, I went about 18 centimeters, 19 centimeters here, and I think that fit perfectly. For the top of the sleeve, I did lots of decreases. So three stitch, two stitch, three stitch, two stitch, alternate. That created a really nice puff, right? 100% happy with the sleeve. Also the knitting queen, it turned out beautifully. I mean, I probably have to keep my arms up for you to see the words perfectly, because arms down, it just looks like knitting queen. Knitting queen. In the original design, it is very close to the armhole, but it was probably tighter. I guess if it was tighter, you'd be able to see the words better but mine ended up being a little bit loose. When I was blocking, maybe because of the silk content, it became longer and wider than I initially knitted it. Um, it doesn't often happen to me, but this one it did. I think it's a loose gauge and the silk content, but that's okay, because I'll just make sure I stand like this. I also finished the star last night. It doesn't look amazing. It won't be mum approved. It's not symmetrical, it's a bit wonky, and some of the some of the arms don't look very nice. So this morning I'm going to unpick that and redo it again now that it's daylight. The only other thing I wish I had done differently is the black line in the ribbing. And this is something I knew but I forgot to do. Actually I did think about it, I don't know why I didn't do it, is 
the black line should be all knit rather than a ribbing. Uh, that will make it look a lot nicer and more obvious. But for some reason, I did a ribbing instead of all stocking stitch. So it doesn't look, it looks fine, but it doesn't look as good as it could have. Otherwise, I'm super happy with this project. It is really comfortable to wear. And I think the black contrast really helps to bring, make the color a bit more neutral for my skin tone. But first, I'm going to redo this stuff. Why is it looking wonky again? This sleeve is just, yeah, it's not straight. Somehow I made it not straight. I can't push it over, can I? No, and this leg is not short. Even though I measured it, what's going on? Finished. What do you think? It looks okay, right? Yeah, it's not the perfect star. It's not the most symmetrical star, but I can live with it. It's very comfortable and it looks great. So I give this jumper a nine and a half out of 10. I think I'm going to wear this all the time and I'm going to love explaining to people, look, it's Knitting Queen and I'm Knitting Queen and I made it. So it's just to summarize, the yarn I use is the Fiber Co Road to China Luxury with um, I think alpaca and silk and cashmere. I did say it earlier in the video, so just check it there. Uh, and the black is Sofiac DK by Rowan. This is a mostly self-drafted pattern, knitting from the bottom up in the round, separating for armholes, a little bit of color working tarsier in the front with Knitting Queen. I showed you how I mapped it out using my Excel. And I knitted the sleeves separately and end up sewing them on. Now, there were a lot of ups and downs in this jumper. There were times I thought I'd give up. Sometimes I put it down for a few days because I was so angry at it, but now it's done. I absolutely love it. The yarn is so comfortable. That's why it's, it was very expensive yarn. Now I've already casted on my next project and it's going to be a cracker. So make sure you subscribe and like and follow along on my knitting journey. My honest review of the Knitting Queen is pretty good. It's not itchy. It looks nice. The color looks funny. I give it a score of 8 out of 10,000. <laughs>